Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and today I'm going to discuss performance, database performance specifically. And uh, I'm going to work directly with the music database, which is one of the ones that we're using in the class currently. I'll also be one that you kind of be interested in so, uh, because of the complexity of the database and the fact that it actually has some tables that are joined together. Let's look a little bit at the diagram first for this database because the table joins that occur in here um, are things that you have to really think about in performance of the database because if you're querying a direct table that's just a single query and it's relatively straightforward to look at how the database performs when you throw in a lot of different joins um, so let's suppose you need to want to see a musician and see how it relates to a specific artist you've got a number of tables that have to be joined together and those joins actually do require a certain amount of performance when you put them into a query so let's look at this. <clears throat> let's, just, let's just start with select star from artists. That was one of the tables that we had there. And um, in this case, I have two artists in there. But what actually occurs when you run this query? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say display estimated execution plan. Okay, one of the options that you have there. And if you look at this, it's a pretty straightforward and it actually tells you the cost. The select statement actually has no physical time or um, or zero percent cost the real cost of the operation is in the clustered index scan it's got to scan through this in this case it's selecting everything and that's really where all the performance associated with getting the results of this query occur is in this scan itself so that's a relatively straightforward um, query that you've got right that we have right here and it would kind of be expected that the scan to get the data back would be what would take all of the processing power and time associated with the query. So, well, let's make it a little bit more complex then. Let's go and let's look at, um, let's first look at this query here. This is one where it actually joins all the tables and it pulls back the musicians associated uh, with the uh, it actually gets the musicians that are associated with all the way back to an artist. Okay, so there's there's one, two, three, four table joins in this one. Well, this is going to be relatively more complex because you've got this these joins that are occurring. So when you look at the joins, however, <clears throat> notice that some of these joins have very little cost associated with them. Now, in this case, the seek has a cost where it actually has to go out and find which of the values uh, go with the value that actually goes between the equal sign but they're not tremendous not, it's not a tremendous cost and this is a relatively fast uh, query the reason for that is that if you noticed the um, the ID fields that are actually used in here and for most of these are primary keys and so those primary keys are already indexed. Now we haven't talked about indexing. You might have seen the lecture on indexing. Indexing makes it makes queries run very fast because it makes it very easy to look something up. So since you have mul multiple nested loops, these inner joins that are occurring, uh, you can see how much these seeks actually cost the whole thing and how much the, the cost of each individual part of the operation is. So when you look at the query all together, each piece of the query, this part right here, this part right here, has a specific cost, processing cost, that occurs. Now, what if you want to go into a little bit more detail than even this and what you actually see because this is an estimated execution plan. Well we have the ability to do that. I'm going to go ahead and trace the query in SQL Profiler. So SQL Profiler can come up here. Okay, I'm going to bring SQL Profiler and SQL Profiler is a tool that profiles things um, SQL Server and here is the actual you know, now that we haven't run the profile yet um, this is running a trace. It hasn't done anything yet, so the trace actually hasn't done anything. I'm going to try to put these both in the same window so you can see the trace occur. Now I'm going to go over to here. Okay, I'm going to execute that, and now I come back. That trace window has 
the actual trace of what occurred there, and the trace is running. So you have a batch starting, and what will happen in this is every step that occurs within here is going to be shown in the trace itself. Let's, I'm going to do this, I'm going to close, I'm going to stop this profile, okay, I'm going to close it, and I'm going to go backwards to the more simple, pro, simple one that we had right here. Okay, I'm still going to run this so that we can actually uh, trace in SQL Profiler. All right, so I've got the trace right there. I'm going to go ahead and execute this. I'm going to go back to the profiler. Okay, and you can see that the trace itself is running. It's actually logging everything that occurs within that profile window and it gives you the details that go with all of the different pieces. Now in this case there's not a tremendous amount of things that are going on and that was in both cases. Do you have these traces? Well let's look at something a little bit more complex then. Let's go ahead and stop the trace and let's go to a, I'm going to close this one, I'm going to close this one, and I have a th third one here which is the execution of a stored procedure. And this is the stored procedure that will produce the report. Now I have, I can go ahead and display the execution plan. And now we have a relatively complex execution plan where each of the individual execution, so in this case I'm executing one query, but this query actually generates other subqueries within other stored procedures which have all the execution plans that go with them. Also, I can trace this within SQL Profile. This one actually does have a fairly complex trace. Let's bring this trace up here. Okay, now if I go ahead and execute this, execute, and we come back over to here, and now you can see that there's a tremendous amount of things that actually occurred within this execution here. And you can see each of the individual opening of the cursors and all the pieces that go within here. So this shows step by step everything that occurred within the execution of that procedure. And this is using the SQL Profiler. So I'm going to go ahead and stop Profiler now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at a little bit more at this execution plan because the execution plan itself is also what you're going to see in the SQL Profiler, the steps that occur. And I'm going to look at this first query that we've got here and I'm going to look at something that occurs here. <clears throat> if you look closely, I have a clustered index insert. Well, what does that mean? If you're familiar with the reporting, I'm not actually inserting data into anything. Well, that's not actually completely true. I'm creating a cursor, and I'm populating the cursor with the results of a query, which does require an insert. So in this case, I actually am doing an insertion because I'm creating, I'm taking the results of a query, which is what a cursor does, putting it into the cursor. So the point of this is to show you that you've got a couple of really good tools. If you're good at writing SQL and you've kind of started mastering how to get things to work the way that you want to work with getting the results that you want, well, the next step is the fact that, guess what? What if a query takes too long to run? What if it's you know too lengthy? You might need to go back and look at how you optimize the database. But before you optimize the database, you've got to know where you need to optimize. The profiler and the um, execution plans are two excellent tools to figure out where you do this optimization. Where do you optimize the database? You optimize the database where you see the greatest cost first. That's the point of optimization. So you need to know where these costs occur so that you can do your optimization in those regions and that's going to give you the capability of actually managing the performance of your database and the queries that occur. Thank you very much. I hope this was very helpful.